begin the Washington State portion of the press conference, I'd like to remind you once again it's okay to take pictures, but please no videoing of the press conference. This time we'd like to ask Coach Etheridge to make an opening statement. Yeah, I mean, um, just really sad and, and disappointed in, in how we played. I'd like, you know, K-State was awesome in the second half, made great adjustments and just really got us standing still. Um, I thought I thought we really lost some opportunities in the first half to extend our lead and, and, and just that that just was glaring to me um, with some turnovers that we had and, and trying to do too much at times. But um, again, just a hard game to, to compete in. You know, you hold a, a really good team to 50 points. You think you're going to have a much better chance to win. And we just had one of those nights where our best our best shooters didn't always shoot it very well. So congrats to K-State. Really proud of our team for being here and fighting like they do on a daily basis. And, and um, you know, disappointed that we didn't do a better job today. OK, at this time, we'll go ahead and open the floor up for questions for the student athletes. If you have a question, please raise your hand and wait until we get the microphone to you. Colton, go ahead. For either of you, uh, how would you kind of assess the uh, shooting struggles tonight? Was it, you know, getting the looks but not falling, or was there something about Kansas State's defense that was kind of, you know? Crystal, yeah. oh, oh, you want go ahead, Charlie, Sorry. if you're ready. That, no, that's fine. You're fine. Um, I would just say, you know, we, we did get a lot of good looks. Um, and just looking at the stats here, you know, obviously we had a really poor shooting night. And I think, um, especially, you know, shooters on the team, myself included, we got a lot of looks that we usually get. They just didn't go in. Um, so, yeah, I think for us, that's just, you know, getting in the gym and getting up those shots every day, um, being more consistent in that area. I think throughout this year that has been a problem for us some games. You know, when we go cold um, from the three-point line, we, we kind of struggle getting into um, different looks and getting into the paint, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I think today we got a lot of looks. We just didn't knock them in. Other questions for the student athletes? We go from Mitch. Yeah, Mitch Norker from the AP. For, for either one of y'all, what, what do you think worked defensively in the first half that, that didn't in the second half? Crystal, could you answer that, please? Yeah. Um, yeah, our coaches had a really good game plan for us and we had some different schemes to try, you know, stop um, both Lee and Sundell and the Glens and, you know, all their great um, players and weapons that they have. And, yeah, I think in that second half when we just, um, you know, weren't scoring as much and we were kind of struggling to get ourselves back in the game, we maybe took some risks that we, risks that we shouldn't have or we kind of just, you know, got a little bit flustered. So... Yeah, we had a great plan in place, but yeah, we did really great at sticking to it in the first half, and just we had some lapses in that second that kind of hurt us. Any other questions for the student athletes? Back to Colton. Did it feel like it, at any point later, you know, after that first half and kind of a grinder of a game, did, did fatigue start to set in a little bit in the second half? Um, I don't know if it was fatigue. As such, I mean, I'm a person that's always like the mentality, you know, you're never fatigued and those things. And we're kind of coached that way. Like it doesn't matter how your body's feeling, you're going to keep going and all those stuff. So I don't really think um, it was fatigue as much, but yeah. I think it was just our decision making. I mean, and yeah, you probably could say that ties into fatigue, but I don't think that's really an excuse that we should use. Um, I think we just had poor decisions in the second half and then that just kind of, you know, stacked on top of each other as well as defensive lapses and it all just kind of compiled and that's why we kind of struggled um, really in that third and fourth quarter. Let's go back to Colton. Uh, you know, I know it's a tough kind of an emotional moment right now, but, you know, just kind of reflecting on being able to, to, to play together as sisters and you talked about, you didn't know if you would, didn't think you would, and being able to share in all these special moments, you know, just kind of, I know it's just right after the last game, but, you know, what, what, what do you just kind of take away from that, that yeah. whole experience? Um, I'll go first since I'm the one leaving. Um, yeah, I mean, just a lot of emotions. Um, so proud of 
not just how Charlize has come into this program, but all of our young players and how they've stepped up and, you know, really made a mark. Um, and I think that's always been my goal and the goal of our team is, as I've been saying over and over again, we want to be in conversations, you know, on the national stage. We want our team to be, like when people talk basketball, we want Washington State to come up in those conversations. So, like, really proud that we've gotten to this point and that's kind of bittersweet for me that, you know, we have, our program is on the rise and we have a lot of great recruits and a lot of the girls here staying that, you know, we're going to keep building that. So for me, really proud of that. Definitely sad um, that, you know, I couldn't help our team get to that next stage and I won't be able to be here. But I know I trust Charlize um, with anything and I know that she and all the other girls will be back in the gym and me and Charlize will play together somewhere down the road. So we're not worried about it and it's not like, you know, I'm never going to see her again. So... So it's not too bad. Yeah, and I think from my perspective, obviously I'm still here. Um, it's more the fact that, you know, we're losing three great, like really great leaders. Um, obviously Crystal on the court, you can't replace that. Um, she's our on-court coach, she calls the shots. She's the most, the hardest working person out there. Um, and that's gonna be really hard, you know, to replace. And also in Mick and Share, you might not see it in the game on the court, but you know, they're just so solid for our team. Um, in our trainings, in the locker room, you know, their voice um, is something we all listen to. You know, all the girls look up to them. They're the best role models we could have asked for. And that's going to also be be really hard to replace. And so we're, we're definitely going to miss them. Um, but, you know, as a team, that's, that's normal. You lose people all the time and you have to find a way to come back, bounce back and um, refigure everything out within your team. Let's go back in the middle there. Obviously not the way you guys envisioned your season ending here, but... You can look back and say this is the second straight trip to the NCAA tournament. What does that kind of accomplishment mean? I know, Crystal, you touched on that a little bit. But, I mean, this program is really starting to be something impactful in the Pac-12 and on a national scale. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, um, we are kind of finishing at the same point we did last year. But if you really reflect on our year and some of the big games we had and how we did kind of all year round. Um, I definitely think that, you know, we've taken strides and steps forward and yeah, so I just definitely not how we wanted to go out, but as I said, kind of bittersweet in terms of, you know, what we have been able to achieve. And if you're really a part of this team and you pay attention to us, you will notice that our program is on the rise and we have a lot of growth and we've made a lot of growth this year, even though, um, you know, it might not show it from how far we've gone, but yeah, definitely think this team is on the rise and I'm excited, you know, for them to keep coming back to these tournaments and keep making some noise um, for our Coog family. Yeah, and I, I probably would just add, you know, Coach, you was talking in the locker room. Um, we're going to celebrate this year and we're going to be really proud of what we've achieved, but on the back side of that, you know, we can't be satisfied with just getting to the tournament. Um, obviously, that's a big achievement. Second year in a row is you know, amazing, amazing for us to get, get back, back here, here, but it's now, now taking that next step and getting past this first game, getting past this first round, because I think, you know, we're really capable of doing that. Um, but yeah, it's just getting in the gym and having that mentality um, every day, knowing that, you know, we can do this and it wasn't just, you know, luck last year or luck this year, you know, we've proven that we can play and compete and get to this level. We just need to figure out how to get past this and get to the next step. Any other questions for the student athletes? We've got one person with their hand up on Zoom. Uh, Jamie, are you there? Hi, Jamie. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, do you have a question for the student athletes? I do. Go ahead. Uh, girls, obviously an incredible season for you yet again. Um, just kind of looking at this game, though, as you've talked about, just two shooting struggles, um, just 16 points in the second half. Was it something they changed in their defense, or do you think it was just coming down to they did something different, you just couldn't get the open looks you wanted. Crystal, could you start? Yeah, um, I mean, you know, we saw that they went zone in the second half and they kind of went away from their man defense. Um, and I think, you know, we kind of were flourishing, um, you know, playing out of like our man sets. And I definitely think um, once we, they went zone and we couldn't, like Charlie said, make those three point shots and we kind of got a little bit flustered. Um, in that second half with our decision making and things like that, I definitely think, you know, um, they, changed, they changed some things up and we didn't make the adjustments that we needed to in that second half. I agree. Do you have any other questions for the student? Yeah, one more. Okay, go ahead. 
Uh, Crystal, you know, for you, as you said, kind of a, a bittersweet feeling that, you know, you've done so much for this program, but obviously turning you over the reins to, to your sister and to the players still remaining. But, you know, it, it's something that when you look back in 34 years, you know, you can look back on this and, and you look at how you kind of helped spearhead the change in uh, a program's culture. Is that something that you can kind of take out of this, even though, as you said, it is a bittersweet moment? Yeah, definitely. In exactly 34 years, um, I will look back and... I will be, um, you know, just so proud of the, the, how the coaches helped me, um, you know, to kind of turn this program around and the work that I've done. And I was just grateful to be kind of on the ride with them and, you know, follow them here and um, really try to do something. And we, I didn't get as far as I would have liked with them and help them as much as I would have liked, but definitely, you know, glad that I was able to be a part of it and was able to be a part of the kind of little coaching story in this program's history here. Okay, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for the student athletes. Ladies, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll now open up the floor for questions for Coach Etheridge. We start front here with Mitch. Yeah, yeah, Coach, um, I think you said yesterday, you know, you hadn't seen a player like Lee, you know, before this year. What was kind of the emphasis to kind of frustrate her? And it worked really well in the first half. What, what changed in the second? Well, I, I mean, I think uh, we got into foul trouble and had to go small a little bit. Uh, fouls really mounted up for the two bigs that I put in. Uh, they obviously got a, a few good looks for her and um but you know every foul ended up in a in a shooting foul and so the free throw you can look both of us were pretty awful shooting the ball and uh shooting it from three and the difference is you know that kind of body that kind of length um you know she's so good better than anyone in the country that can catch it high and keep it high and you know if if you get she gets a lot of calls and on that and that that was that was really the difference. I thought they just got to the free throw line before the bonus right away, and that's how they scored a lot of their points. And that, you know, point wise, that that really is the difference in the game. Um, but I thought they did a really good job of, of maybe get, changing where they they threw it to her. Um, you know, they adjusted well, and I thought they're. They, you know, they frustrated us a little bit on the defensive end, and, and we weren't as sure as we wanted to be when they were switching defenses, and and um, you know, and just you know, at some point you gotta you gotta we gotta you gotta balance that out, and you gotta make some shots from the perimeter if you can't score over her, and, and we just didn't do that today. Any other questions? Okay, go back to Mitch. Coach, before last year, you know, this was a program that hadn't made the NCAA tournament in 30 years or something like that. Um, this is your second year in a row. You're, you know, you had a winning record competing in the Pac-12, a very tough conference. Um, you're only losing, I think, one starter from this team. I mean, do you feel like this, this team is closer to getting over the hump? And how good do you feel about, you know, kind of taking this momentum into next year? Well, I really want to believe that our foundation is really solid, and, and I, I think losing – you know, the foundational pieces of, of our other two seniors that don't play a lot, Mick and, and Sheer, uh, losing Crystal is, is a big loss for us. Um, we have a couple of point guards that we're bringing in and a couple of uh, different kind of uh, players that I think will, you know, bring us a little bit more depth there. And, uh, but it's, those are big shoes to fill. But I love the fact that, that we're still pretty young and that we have everybody coming back. and. And now the challenge for that group is to uh, consistently get better. Uh, I think recruiting will get better for us. Uh, we will continue to, to try to get a little bit more talent, a little bit more size, things like that that you've got to keep doing to keep up with um, teams that have this kind of size. Uh, but again, we've got to really be proud of the fact that in four years we've taken a program that had not won very many games in the history of their program to um, um, competing in the NCAA tournament. So couldn't be more proud, couldn't be more grateful to get to coach um, that senior class. And uh, and I do. I, I have every great feeling and excitement about what I think this group that's coming back will bring to the table and, and try to improve on and, and try to continue this streak and, and take us further. Colton, in the back. I'll direct a, a kind of a similar question to what I asked them. Uh, 
Kansas State's defense, or I guess would you put more of the shooting struggles kind of on your on yourselves and missing what you normally make or, or kind of what they did in their adjustments? Well, you know, as a coach, I'm always going to be critical of myself and, and us not doing enough to help, help our team. Uh, it is unbelievably unusual to have our best three-point shooter go, you know, 0 for 10. I, you know, we missed some layups. Um, again, I think the opportunities that we missed in the first half, instead of having, you know, a little bit of a lead, I think we could have been up 12 or, or 14. And I think, you know, those are the ones that I look at that, that, that you can start figuring things out in the second half and you can manage it if you don't when you go dry. But um, disappointed in how we responded. Um, and again, I'm going to look at me first and, and my staff first and, and figure out ways to be better for our team. But um, I don't care. You know, it's still the same point. We held a team, a really good team, to 50 points, and you've got to, whether it's the coaches, and it certainly is in some ways, but and the players, as far as what we've got to do to get better, uh, we've got to learn how to score the ball better. Any other questions here for Coach? Let's go back in the middle there. I know you've kind of touched on outlook um, going forward and reflecting on the growth of the program going forward, Coach. But um, what's kind of the message going back into the locker room? Um, you know, after this loss and then going forward, um, going back to Pullman and, and how, like, when you start to get back to work, what's the message to, to, to build on this uh, even further? Well, I, I really feel good about our team and, and the competitors that are in that locker room and, and obviously their commitment to getting better and their work ethic. I think we do a, a really good job as coaches as far as player development and, and putting in some workouts that, that will help continue to grow our team. Uh, there's certain spots on the floor that I think are going to be rock solid for us. I think there's huge growth that our players will, will and can make. Um, and, you know, that point guard spot's going to be a concern for ours. We've got we've to figure that out. And, and again, maybe recruiting's never over. So we've got to continue to find ways to get better. But I, our, our, the work ethic in our program is really solid. The, the commitment, the, the um, the excitement to, to do that, obviously, we'll take some time off. There's not much time between when we get back to the final from the Final Four to uh, school finals and stuff like that. So there's very limited time to be in the gym with them. But uh, I have a ton of confidence that this team is hungry and not satisfied. And yes, we will celebrate it. We're going to celebrate last year's team, because I don't think we did enough, and this year's team um, at some point. But um, um, we're never going to just live on that we're going to also celebrate and, and and look forward to the future Colton. what would you call the that defense you were playing on lee with the zone help and 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 uh, how well did you think you executed and then kind of on top of that how crucial was ula and we just had a couple of uh, different coverages we helped from the backside in some cases and then we sagged off of um players that were kind of reluctant shooters and you know they're a little bit like us. They have some kids that just aren't shooting it well, and I think everybody that's been successful against them has, has uh, found a way to take Lee away and, and make other people beat them. And I, again, I think we kind of did that. You know, when you consider 50 points, that's, that should be enough to win a game. It's just we weren't good enough to, to get to 51. And so, again, I think we had um, a couple of plans, and and given the fact that we, we lost a little bit more of our size with fouls and had to go super small on, on Lee, I think that, that hurt us. But I thought it would counter on the offensive end because it put more shooters on the floor, and it just didn't for us. So um, again, she's a handful. She's really good at what she does, and they, they know how to get it to her. So it's credit to them. OK, we have a couple minutes left, and I've got a couple people on Zoom, I hope. Jamie, are you still there? I'm here. Do you have a question for Coach? Yeah, I got a couple. Go ahead. Coach, uh, first and foremost, congratulations on another fantastic uh, overall season. Um, you know, you mentioned Yo going over for free, and, and it just it, it didn't seem to have the depth scoring tonight behind behind the sisters. Um, how much does that change the way you can approach offense when really, you know, ninety percent of your offense is really coming from uh, from Charlize and Crystal? Yeah, I mean, Jamie. Thank you, any, by the way, and, and um, 
I mean, it's been our, our struggle all year. We haven't shot the ball well enough. Uh, we don't have enough depth of shooters. I mean, you look at the people that are going to win in this tournament. I mean, everybody plays pretty good D. Some are better than others, but gosh, people people can stretch the floor and people make timely threes, and we have a lot this year. And when we win, we we make threes. And and but we're too re reliant on one or two players, and and that's about recruiting. That's about our, our bigs getting better and being a presence in the post. Uh, we didn't really have that today. Um, so I think we can get better at every position on the floor, and, and in part that everybody in our locker room needs to be better, and we need to recruit people that can put the ball in the basket. So I, I love the fact that you can basically tell our team to watch the games from here on out, and you're gonna, you know, people are going to see that uh, there are a lot of teams that can really affect winning. And you got to have some depth to affect winning, and, and we just are a little bit too pencil thin. Did you have one more question, Jamie? Yeah, I had one more. Uh, you know, Bella only plays 13 minutes. Obviously, fouls uh, a big part of that. But coming down the stretch in the fourth, were you just trying to go small, or was she a little banged up from that that elbow she caught early? No, I mean, I just I just thought that that you know we could stretch the floor a little bit better. Um, you know, I'll second guess a lot of things. I, I you know, she just got a little bit. Of, anxious in the first part of the game and tried to do a little bit too much again just she's got to be better in, in the future and she has so much willingness to work at her game and and to try to get better and part of her thing is going to be you know learning how to stretch the d and and get a little bit more range on her shot and I, i'm really i think this off season you're going to see a different player next year and and she's going to be able to stretch the floor a little bit more than she does and we'll be very comfortable doing that so I, I can't wait to see what Bella will look like next year. She's a very hungry player that wants to be great, but tonight just felt like we didn't have enough, you know, people that could shoot the ball and, and needed to go to that. But like I said, well, I'll second guess myself all the rest of the week. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Brenna, are you there? I am. Hi, Brenna. Do you have a question for Coach? Yes, um, Coach. You, uh, you coach Crystal for over five years now, I believe. Just, um, just kind of talk about her as a player and and her impact on on I guess both of the programs that you you coach at. All right. I mean, that's when she walked in the door at Northern. She was not a a complete player yet, or complete leader, or a complete bought in, you know. But she had a will to her, and she. Um, she could will herself past conditioning tests when she hadn't hadn't trained. I mean, she has a will to her, and she has an IQ, and she has a toughness, and that came with her the first day that she got there. Um, she changed her program at Northern. She helped us have kind of a real championship season um, in that year, that second year that I coached her, uh, and and look at what she's done here. She comes in, sits for a year watches the Pac-12, wanted the challenge to play at the highest level, um, which is typical of, of her, uh, but she got to sit and then the opportunity to um, come in and play with her sister and then COVID happens, she gets to play two years. I'm so happy for her. I'm so happy that they got to play together for two years. Um, I love that family. I think they are just such good people and, and such great competitors and uh, they want to win. They love what we're trying to do at Washington State. They're kind of those gritty people that 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 have a chip on their shoulder. And again, what she did for Northern and turning that program around and making us that, and then turning turning us around at, at Washington State, it has a lot to do. And she carried a lot of weight. It has a lot to do with Crystal Ledger Walker. So proud that I got to coach her. Um, thankful I get to continue to coach her sister. And I'm so I'm so you know, excited and, and grateful for just knowing that family and and uh, getting to to uh, kind of do this thing together. Okay, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for Coach. Coach, thank you very, very much. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. A recording of today's press conferences will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP.